G'day viewers, welcome to a weekend TFU. Welcome, g'day, g'day, welcome TFU, I'm back again. <laughs> yes, basically uh, held off for a couple of days, so AZ could be here. Thank you, that was very kind of you to hold off, I appreciate it, and I will come around to your place with uh, cakes and sexual favours. Yeah, just all this whole being hospitalised and bits falling off. Not and... cakes though. No, no, but he's with us now, and uh, one of the bigger issues of the last week in Australia was the passing of former Prime Minister John Malcolm Fraser. And that surprised everyone and no one because he was like elderly and you know, but you know, you expect these old guys to just keep on going because they're like statues of themselves after a while and mm. you're like, oh shit, Gough Whitlam died, oh shit, Malcolm Fraser died, oh shit, there you go. And they were interestingly uh, contemporaries, Gough Whitlam uh, and was followed by Malcolm Fraser and Malcolm Fraser was actually instrumental in the rather controversial dismissal uh, of the Whitlam government. Go look that up. Way too complicated for us to explain here. A little bit. But, short version, made a lot of lefties pissed off. Oh, like car burning, people rolling around the street going, Why? This is the government we have elected. No, we should have been bloody... No, screaming, yelling, crying. Yeah. You see lots of pictures online of people holding signs saying, Shame, Fraser, shame. Uh, because of his behaviour at that point. Uh, and you also see a lot of pictures uh, of people um, standing around places saying, Goff's got to go. There was a bit of that too. There, it was a pretty tumultuous time, 1975. Oh. Goff was tough till he hit the rough. And, and Uncle Sam and John were quite enough. Uh, hey, how old are you? Did you get that? Um, so, <laughs> uh, Malcolm Fraser was a Conservative Liberal Party Prime Minister, uh, introduced uh, what a lot of people thought were very harsh and austere economic uh, terms. Because they were harsh and austere. <laughs> they were. <clears throat> and he also uh, recognised Australia had a responsibility to accept a lot of uh, boat people from Vietnam, displaced people from Vietnam. What? 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 And he actually said uh, in later interviews, oh, if we'd put that to public vote, 90% of people would have been against it. But we just told them it was the right thing to do and this is why. And you might not be surprised if you followed the last 10, 20 years in Australian politics that he was not enamoured of his protege uh, John Howard demonising asylum seekers. He was quite upset at that. Yes. And in fact, he acted upon it. Yes. He, he, he became very outspoken on the topic of asylum seekers and refugees. He mentored half the Greens. Yep. He became, from someone who was ultra right-wing when in power... And he was. And now, the quick contextualisation, though, ultra right-wing back then wasn't. Yeah, but even from what he was, he moved quite a bit to the left, particularly on social issues, to the point where he is far more progressive than anyone, not just in his Liberal Party, oh, but no. in the supposedly progressive Labour Party as oh, well. Oh, yes. Way to the left of, of anyone. Of them, of yeah. them, of the so. left, of the big left party, and, and he's to the left of them, and it's just, yeah, it's quite an eye-opener. Um, it was quite interesting where he sta started off being outspoken against what he saw the direction his Liberal Party was taken, to the point where when Tony Abbott was elected leader, he resigned. He just got out. He said, you guys, I don't recognise this party anymore. It's not the party of Menzies anymore. There's nothing liberal about the Liberal Party. Fuck is, I'm gone. And it was like, oh. oh it was a pretty oh, goddamn big smack oh. in the face, basically. So, of course, we have a, a sitting Liberal Party Prime Minister. So he has lots of good things to say about this giant of the Liberal Party. He had to gloss over, oh, and the dude really fucking hated me. And hated the shit out of him actually resigned the party in protest at Abbott. It's just like, it, it's like, oh, the giant of the Liberal Party, fierce, proud Australian, did all these great things, would have fucking knifed me in the fucking throat if he got a chance. If we were, say, in a prison rec room and I was looking at the telly and he had like a barbell that I hadn't strapped down with super glue, if I wasn't looking, he'd have caved me skull in. Yeah. It's the whole thing like, uh, if I'd got invited to a party room meeting of former Prime Ministers and I walked in and the door locked behind me and it was just Malcolm Fraser and a straight razor on the table, I would have been in trouble. Oh, yeah, yeah. You've got to run fast. Get quick, get quick. That straight razor is the only thing between you and a caucus. Yeah, I mean, he might have been about 80, but he was a big man. He's a big man. He's, He's a big, big man. He was handy with his feet. He was handy with his fists. He was handy with his um, uh, uh, sneering. And, he, and it, when he hit you... 
He'd always uh, doing it in that uh, upper class liberal way. Oh, I, I don't think that uh, the uh, arterial bleeding from your neck is nearly adequate enough uh, to uh, drown out these screams from the kneecapping I'm about to get you, you little shit. So, yeah, the passing of Malcolm Fraser uh, not, didn't upset as many lefties as the passing of Gough Whitlam, but it is a good example of, if you're not a complete tool, you can recognise the contributions of someone you don't necessarily agree with. Indeed, indeed. I'm very conflicted about the man myself personally, because he was very right-wing, but he got very left-wing, and he has a lot... He never lied. The guy never lied. He was a very straight and honourable man. He was ruthless. Oh, yeah. Hush. Read up on the dismissal. He was ruthless. But wouldn't bullshit you. And, and, and they would say, oh, we're going to promise this stuff for the election. And you go, nah, we can't deliver. Hmm. What a concept. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Malcolm Fraser, one more uh, giant of Australia's 20th century, has passed on. Mm. And let's talk about the uh, moral, intellectual and political midgets that are in uh, power and opposition now. Oh, they're funny. They're funny. They're little and they run around. They run around. Yeah. This week, we've got the introduction of metadata retention laws in Australia. Oh, hang on, Angry. Too long didn't read. I don't understand it. I'm just going to run away in my mind and freak out about it. Sure, it's going to be great. Or is it not? Short version, government and police can spy on you whenever the fuck they want. Ah. And this, uh, what I love there are two bits of it that uh, the, the ironing was delicious, as uh, Bart Simpson has said. Uh, first, this was the party of free speech who has introduced laws that says uh, the government and the police can spy on you whenever the fuck they want. And second, some supporters of the opposition Labour Party go, I'm really upset that Labour didn't speak up against this. You mean because it was their fucking idea? When they were in power, they were wanting to do the same thing. And then, the, I still love you, you probably find some clips and photos online from uh, the last federal election in Australia. A lot of Liberal Party supporters going about, I'm voting Liberal because I support free speech. Because I support privacy. Oh, because I support getting just ass fucked by the people who betray your absolute core principles. Yay, politics. Yeah. So... Yeah, look, in case you're wondering, uh, the metadata, this means uh, your phone records and your internet traffic uh, is going to be monitored. When they say metadata, technically that's data about data. It's not your phone call being recorded. It's not what's on the website you're on being recorded. But the fact that you made a phone call, the fact that you visited a particular IP address, uh, and when they track that and they can just keep this on record forever now for whenever they want to use it against you. Mm -hmm. In terms of phone calls, it's your number, the number you called, the time of the call, your location. Hang on, your location? Yes, like a landline, if it's a landline, or if you're on a mobile, the cell tower that was actually uh, connecting you. So, and also uh, the geolocation information from your phone, unless you've got it all switched off, which 90% of people have it switched on. Do not have it switched off. So um, after the fact, uh, they can get everything that you looked at, like uh, emails, not the content of your email, just who it was to, who it was from, uh, and the time it was sent. And so when you're in contact with that person, and it's like, oh, they're not monitoring the websites, they're just oh. knowing the IP address. So like, yeah, they're not monitoring you, but if you're communicating with someone they are monitoring, uh, then they put that together. And it's like, oh, but that's just bad guys, that's terrorists, bad guys. criminals. Terrorists, terrorist brown people. Mm. Which is up until a point is kind of sort of true. Uh, it's just, if you look at... History. That's crazy talk, Angry Aussie. You're just crazy talk with your stuff from yesteryear. That stuff never happens again and again yeah. and again and again and again and again. Basically, embarrass the cops. Uh, embarrass the government. Whoops. Expose criminality or wrongdoing on their part. Mm. They will fuck you six ways from Sunday. And forever. Yep. And they will be all over. And this is the thing like, oh, what could possibly go wrong? What, why are journalists so upset about this? Well, <laughs> you know when journalists report a story because a whistleblower leaked them stuff, the people, in almost every single case, when every major 
instance of police or political criminality has been exposed, the person who released that information is technically breaking the law. Yes, they are. They were... They had access to privileged information, which was supposed to be secret, because the people who were being exposed never wanted that public. But journalists traditionally have not had to give up their sources. Mm. Not quite like the confessional, but close. Yeah. Traditionally, a journalist hasn't had to say who told them the big secret. If it's true, the journalist is protected. Journalists only get in trouble when sometimes if they print something that's not actually true. Only but, sometimes. Sometimes. Mm. But if they print something that's true, broadly, they've been protected. How will this change things? Well, Journalist A publishes, look what the dirty bastards in the police are up to. Oh, oh that's awful. It's a crime. It's awful. And the police will stamp that out. Or oh, they will look, okay, where did that information came from? It came from here. Let's tally up a list of everyone who could possibly have had information, access to this information. Now let's get a warrant to get the journalist's metadata. We're not tapping his phone. No, God, no. That'd be an invasion of privacy. Oh, no, we don't want to know about him. We just want to know his metadata, where he's yeah. been, who he's called, yeah. what he's looked at, what he's been about, and where he is. Yes, we're, we're not surveilling her house. No, 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 we just want the metadata. So then we track back and go, what is every phone call that's come to this person? What is every location they've been in? Where does that cross over with our list of people who could have told them, oh look, now we know who told them and when they told them. Let's jail that fucker who dared to expose our criminal behaviour. Yeah, that, that will absolutely happen. This is the thing. You see, when you get someone who is honestly not very switched on to possible uh, alternative, sorry, outcomes of their actions, like uh, Specialist uh, Manning from the US Army who released a whole bunch of stuff to WikiLeaks, sure, no one was monitoring the then Bradley Manning, now Chelsea M Manning, uh, when the information was being taken out, but once it was public, they went back and said, who did that? That's who did that. And a young Manning seemed very surprised at ending up in prison after that. Then you've got uh, uh, Snowden, who <laughs> saw that shit coming and left the country before mm. publicising what he knew. See, and that is what it comes down to. You're looking at a future where either th there are only two sorts of people who will ever tell you and I what level of criminal behaviour is going on in the police and the government and the military? One, people who aren't that switched on and don't realise what's going to happen to them. And there are a few of those. There are a few of those. Two, people who are prepared to give up their lives. People who know, when I go public with this, it's over. I don't have a life. I have to run and hide because... Me embarrassing these powerful people makes me a target for the rest of my life. 1984, kids, not meant to be a how-to guide, but here we are.